Susan, uh, you have been investigating philosophy of mind and have moved towards uh, a kind of panpsychism. You call yourself a panpsychist, but your panpsychism is uh, quite different than uh, than others, uh, uh, with particularly your use of what you and Mark Bailey have called proto-time, a different uh, a d dimension of time that maybe sits below space-time as, as we know it. Uh, and you call this new kind of consciousness, which is this proto-time relationship, a uh, superpsychism. So give me a sense of what superpsychism is, what motivates it, and why you're uh, uh, offering this radically new understanding of both quantum mechanics and consciousness in, in one fell swoop. Well, thanks for asking. This is a topic that makes me very happy. Um, it's not <laughs> I want to make like you happy. Other segments, <laughs> you know, where we're talking about AI doom and gloom. We're talking about what I think is ultimately the structure of consciousness in the universe. So begin with uh, the tension between relativity theory and quantum mechanics. Um, you know, that's p bothered me and a lot of people for a long time, right? I mean, um, so I remember when I was thinking about it and I was reading about emergent space time when I was at the Institute for Advanced Study, there were a lot of string theorists around me and, you know, I had a lot of fun chatting with them. Um, and I was starting to read some of the papers on space time emergence and I actually became convinced that uh, they were on the right track with respect to the idea that space time is emergent. And it wasn't just unique to um, the string theorists. I mean, there were people like Carlo Rovelli, for example, advocates of uh, loop quantum gravity, for instance, who were also kind of saying something similar. Um, they were saying that space time emerges from some sort of topology that is really uh, it's more like pseudo geometry. It's not even a spatial geometry. And that got me thinking, OK, so in that domain, I was worried about that and had been I've been worried about this for 10 years or something like that. But in the domain of consciousness, I've also been worried about how to answer the hard problem, the problem of why we need to be conscious. Why does it feel like something to be us? So about 10 years ago, I proposed that um, I think maybe we could have a unified answer, the same type of entity, if we pose it as fundamental, we can answer both questions. And of course, that's a bold move to make. Nevertheless, <laughs> I've been saying this in a few papers, um, hinting at it. So I finally, uh, I had a great conversation with Roger Penrose. He started telling me about retrocausation and it got me so agitated because he was positing backwards causation that I locked myself in my place on the ocean and just wrote the paper super psychism and then called my friend Mark Bailey who has background in physics he had a postdoc in physics I was like Mark <laughs> well, you got to do this with me because I'm going to say something really dumb okay so that's how it happened so what what's proto time all right I take reality to consist in and in quantum entanglements at the fundamental level um, and I think entanglements are um, fascinating because when you have um, two particles, we'll call them Alex, Alice and Bob, entangled in a pure state, the von Neumann entropy of the whole system is zero. So there's no entropy in that. And it's only, I think, that as the system decoheres and interacts with its environment, that time's arrow emerges. And this is where I'm drawing from work on entropy and time's arrow that people like Brian Greene and others have proposed is, you know, how time gets its direction. And I'm just saying, I think they're right. Okay. So now put, put this together. When you really think <laughs> about these bizarre cases in quantum mechanics, I think it looks like reality is timeless at the level of entanglement and that time, its arrow emerges. So what's fundamental? What's fundamental is proto time. It's time without a direction. I know that's hard to conceive of, right? But time only gets its direction upon interaction with the environment. And I use that as 
a form of panpsychism. So I say that perfect coherence, and here's where I draw from these resonance theories of consciousness. Um, you know, you'll see speakers at MindFest like Tam Hunt and Jonathan Schooler advocating this. I say, look at that. It's perfect sync in that isolated quantum system. You have perfect resonance. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing. Closer to Truth is now accepting your tax-exempt donations. Please come to closertotruth.com forward slash donate. Thank you very much for supporting us and thanks for watching.